Hey, what's up, guys? Um, so today, I, I want to tell you a, a little story about the absolute worst day of my life. Um, and I'll tell you, you know what? The week already had not been going great for that. Um, uh, so I had this hobby that I like to do where I would take heroin and cocaine, and I would mix them together, and I would do them both at once. <laughs> it's, called, it's called a speedball. Do we have any fans, speedball fans? <laughs> And the audience, okay, so everybody. <laughs> Look, I get it, it's fun. It is so fun, it is life-ruiningly fun. Which is, in fact, what I had been doing like for months, like ruining my life by doing this. And uh, that particular week, my, uh, my job had fired me and my girlfriend had realized I was using again and had said, you can't stay here anymore. She'd thrown me out. So I was like addicted to drugs. I was broke and I had nowhere to live. So I was like, all right, we're, we're, you know, I need to figure out a place to just regroup a little bit and probably do more drugs. And I was like, I'll go on Airbnb and find the cheapest, most gnarly place that I can find. And that's that's what I did. It was a spot in Bushwick and I, I um, you know, my uh, girlfriend at the time had thrown me out. Um, and I showed up at this place in Bushwick. And here's the thing. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but I've lived a pretty privileged life. <laughs> like a nice house on Long Island. And I mean, sure. Look, like if you wanted to change the channel on the TV, you needed to use the vice grips. But it was okay because they were already attached to the television set. <laughs> and like, sure, not every room was insulated for winter. But like, you know what, like that's what everyone in the 70s, that's how we lived, right? I didn't know anyone who had a house that was fully insulated. Like, and if that's the stuff I was complaining about, I consider it to be a pretty privileged upbringing. Um, which is why I'd never seen a bed bug before. I knew what they looked like, so I spotted them because this place was fucking packed to the rafters with them. <laughs> Believe me. And I was like, you know what? Everyone makes a big deal about these things, but I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> Have you guys ever had bed bugs? It's fucking horrible. <laughs> it's not fine. It was, it, was, it was awful. And by the next day, I was, I was arguing with the guy, and he was saying, well, I had no idea we had bed bugs. It was ridiculous. There were like billions of them running around. And we got into a big fight. I was like, I'm telling Airbnb, I'm telling everybody, blah, blah, blah. And, we, and I stormed off into the night. And only once I got outside did I realize that it was January. <laughs> I was broke, addicted to drugs, and I could not even go to a friend's house because now I had bed bugs. <laughs> so I walked around trying to like figure out what to do. And again, I had no money. Um, I had no real resources. What I did have was a bunch of drugs. So I'm like, all right, look, I'm gonna do a bunch of drugs. Keep, you know, keep my spirits up all night, <laughs> right? Um, but I may have overdone it because by the time day broke over, you know, the, the Bushwick skyline, I had become convinced, I had become so paranoid that I was convinced that like the bad review I left on Airbnb and the argument that I had meant that Airbnb had probably decided that I was a liability and they were gonna send, you know, their people in to like take care of me. So I was like, now not only did I have to find a place to stay, I had to like evade the Airbnb agents. So when I walked into the 34th Street um, Verizon store to change my phone number so that the satellites couldn't track me, because you know, I'm thinking, right? I'm smart. <laughs> All it took was this, uh, some poor schmuck walking by me to brush against me, and I guess something pricked me, I don't know. But I became convinced that like he was one of the agents, and he had, he had hit me with something because my heart started racing and my throat started to close, and I was like, God, he must have gotten me with some sort of poison dart contraption. So with my last dying breath, I turned around, pointed at him, and said, please, stop this man. He's darted me, and threw myself down on the industrial carpeting. In, the 34th Street Verizon store to await the end. Okay, I will say this for the patronage of the Verizon store right by Penn Station. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm lying down in the service area, hyperventilating, like, like, 
you know, light flashing before my eyes, and people are just stepping right over me, being like, I haven't made that a plan. I feel like the speed has been a little slow. So eventually, you know, the paramedics came and they, they wheeled me outside. And I just like, you know, casually, I explained to them that I'd just been darted by my political enemies. <laughs> and that if they could just hook me up with like the anti-poison dart, like the antidote that I, of course an ambulance would have, then I'll just be on my way. I don't have to bug them anymore. And they were like, they were pretty cool about it, uh, to be honest. <laughs> they were like, Look, sir, we've got that, obviously. It's standard for every ambulance. <laughs> but we want to bring you to the hospital anyway because, you know, what if, the, what if they hit you with some sort of exotic poison? And I was like, hang on, exotic poison? I was like, I don't know, that seems a little far-fetched. <laughs> but they were insistent. They're like, we've been seeing a lot of this lately, and I believe them. So I was like, all right. All right, I'll go to the hospital. Let's get this, you know, let's get this all, all done and dusted. And we were driving, and I saw we drove right by the first hospital that was only a few blocks from the Verizon store. And then when we passed the second one, I realized they were not bringing me to a normal hospital. They were bringing me to Bellevue. Um, and under normal circumstances, this would be fine because God knows I needed help. And I knew I did. But um, the issue was that my girlfriend that had thrown me out had just graduated. She got a PhD in psychology and was doing her externship in the Bellevue <laughs> psych ward intake at that very moment. And I still thought we were gonna get back together. <laughs> so I, I decided to explain this to the, the guys. I was like, hey guys, you seem pretty cool. <laughs> Check this out. Um, this, is, this is the story. I was like, and I explained it to them, and they were like, don't worry, sir. We're, we're going to get you the help you need. And I was like, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> You're bringing me to my girlfriend's office. And they were like, just relax, sir. Um, <laughs> but it, it, I couldn't relax. <laughs> Believe me. So they got me there and they put me in the waiting room and you know there's these big double doors and I'm in there with everybody else and uh, I know at any moment um, is gonna come walking through the doors and see me there covered in bed bug scabs <laughs> looking completely psychotic. So I'm like, all right, how hard can it be to break out of Bellevue? <laughs> I didn't have a plan, but I cooked one up real quick. Well, the first... <laughs> For the fir my first attempt, I stood up, looked at the bare spot on my wrist where like a watch would have been, said, oh my God, my meeting, and started just walking to the exit <laughs> as though there was like an important business meeting going on somewhere and people were like, have you guys seen Bed Bug Businessman? It's about yay tall, covered in bed bug scabs, totally psychotic. We can't start this important business meeting without him. And that time they were like pretty nice. They were pretty cool. They like just sort of like, like redirected me back to a seat and I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to be more intense the second time. <laughs> so that time I just stood up and I screamed, oh my God, my cats! And I ran <laughs> for the exit. I left my bags, everything, and that time they took me down like, like with like massive prejudice. Like it was like three orderlies, a cop, and there was like a, a, a nurse walking towards me with like a syringe. Like one flew over the, the cuckoo's nest, but I still had like an ace in the hole, like something on my sleeve. I looked at her and I just made the saddest face I've ever made. It looks like this. <laughs> Hoping, and she, she would let me go, because, you know, it's, it, it had got me out of some jams in the past. And she just, not even phased at all, she just turned to the orderly next to me and goes, oh look, Jerry, this one's sad. <laughs> and stuck me with the needle. And it was lights out. I, w I woke up, I was, I was, I, there was no escape, I was, I was inside. Um, so it's been a couple years since, since that fateful day has happened. Um, I'm really happy to be able to tell you this, this story today, because um, actually, Laura and I, two years ago, finally tied the knot. We got married. Thank you. And in two months, we are expecting our very first kid. You guys, 
Thank you so much. Because also the, that last part I just made up. No, I was lying. What did you believe? Come on. You, th you think she would have a baby with me? <laughs> I'm worried. You guys have to leave here and go, look, go out into the world. It's night. <laughs> God, no, 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 no. No, I never heard from her again. <laughs> Rightfully so, too. Too. Once I saw her on the street, and I just turned away and walked in the other direction because I'm not a monster. <laughs> um, but I do have an absolutely wonderful girlfriend. And uh, every, everything is like going great. That job that I mentioned that uh, fired me before, they hired me back. Everything's going great and I've never been happier in my entire life than I am right now. And let me tell you, this time, I'm not taking a fucking iota of it for granted. Thank you so much. Adam Selbst, everybody.